Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be making some alternative cards using the March 2023 sheet load of cards and the new Spellbinders Quick and Easy Card Kit of the Month, Be Yourself. I hope you'll stick around, see how I'm going to switch up the sheet load a little bit, and see the finished cards. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Each month, I get a few kits from Spellbinders to use and share with you here on my channel. Earlier this month, I already shared what I made with their new Stitch Die of the Month and their Large Die of the Month. Both of those cards are up on screen now, and if you would like to check out those videos, I will have them linked in that description box below. Today, I'm going to be using the Quick and Easy Card Kit. These are full of pattern papers, card stocks, card bases, envelopes, puffy stickers, chipboard stickers, ephemera, even a little bling. These kits are always full of fun elements and pretty patterns, and they make putting together a card set very easy because everything coordinates. Now I will have this kit as well as the other ones linked down in that description box if you want to go get more information. The cards I'm going to be making today are going to use the sketch from the latest sheet load of cards. Now if you haven't downloaded this one yet and you would like to, I will have the debut video listed, guess where, down in that description box. I was inspired to create today's cards after I put together the latest sheet load showcase, which is where I share the cards that my team of collaborators have created. Some of them, instead of flipping the patterns from top to bottom throughout their cards, they left the top one the same and the bottom one the same all throughout. I liked the way that looked and I wanted to give it a try as well. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools I bring in, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! The first thing I'm going to do is get my pattern paper picked out. Because that small strip at the bottom is one inch tall, I knew that I could get six strips from one piece of paper. And then for the pieces at the top that are two inch tall, I could get three from each sheet. So that means when I spread out my pattern paper here to look for what I want to use, I need one pattern that will be the strip at the bottom and two that will be the two inch tall strips at the top. Every time I put out a new sheet load of cards, I do include single card dimensions, and that's what we'll be focusing on today. The yellow pattern paper will be that one inch tall strip at the bottom, so the first thing I had to do was cut this piece to four and three quarters inches wide. Then I rotated it and I started cutting one inch strips at a time using the mark to the left of my cut line. Now remember all of these dimensions, you will use up the entire height of six inches, so make sure you don't do what I call generous cuts. Make sure it's right at one inch or a tad under. For the pieces that go at the top, I'm going to start by cutting two inch rows off the top of the pattern paper. Now make sure if your pattern paper has a direction that you make your first cut the correct way. For me, I did rotate it to the side so when I put it back correctly, all of the flowers were pointing up. Now once I have those two inch tall strips, I need to cut them into the final pieces, which are two inches wide, one and a half inches wide, and one inch wide. Now because that piece on the very right is one inch, and I want the pattern to flow left to right, I am going to rotate my pattern paper to be upside down before I make my cuts. 
Then using the measurements to the left of my cut line, I'm gonna cut that one inch, one and a half inch, and two inch. And then I'll just make sure before I put them on the card that I rotate those papers back around. I cut all of these two inch tall strips in that same way. And when I was finished at the end, I made sure to group each of the cards pieces together, once again, just so that pattern would flow correctly. The next thing I want to do is cut the cardstock mat for the pattern paper pieces and the cardstock strip that goes across the middle. Now the card kit did come with some coordinating cardstock, so I'm going to choose some pieces for this from the backer. I put the pattern papers up to it to figure out which colors I wanted and you'll see for the floral one with the beehives I wasn't quite sure so I held up both the purple and the blue gave it a once over and I did go ahead and end up deciding to do the blue for the cardstock mats on this so I got out four pieces of each color three of these got cut down to five inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall and then the final Final piece of the cardstock I cut down for the sentiment strip. So I started by cutting the piece at five inches wide and then I cut three pieces that were three quarters of an inch tall. Now if you are going to stamp on this piece and your sentiments taller you can definitely adjust the height for whatever you need. I just kept cutting both cardstocks until I had all my mats and cardstock strips. Now that all of the pieces are cut, I'm going to start putting the pattern papers onto the cardstock mat. Now in the original process video, I give a lot of tips and tricks and explain why I do what I do, but I just wanted to show you quickly here how I do put together the pattern papers on one of the cardstock mats. The rest of this I did do off screen. And also off screen, since I would not be stamping on the strips that go across the middle, I did a little embossing. For the paper with the beehive, I did little hexagons, and for the papers with the flowers, I did some kind of leafy vine embossing. The Spellbinders card kit comes with eight card bases and envelopes, so I did use six of those for today's cards. Before I put the pattern paper piece onto the card front though, I did add the embossed strip across the middle. Now some of these, the strips were a little bit too wide, so I just brought in my nonstick scissors and snipped off that extra. Once that was all done, I added adhesive to the back and placed this centered onto the front of the card base. You'll notice that for a lot of my adhering, I do rotate or flip my stuff around upside down. For me, it's just easier to see all three sides that way. I continued adhering the card fronts to the card bases, and here is a look at the two different pattern paper combos I put together. Most of this I did do off screen, but I did want to show you something else I did off screen. You might have noticed when I was cutting the pattern papers that I did have some scraps left over. I decided I would try to use as much of that as possible, so I got out a couple different size circle paper punches, and I punch pieces and place them on the insides. Throwing this little bit of pattern paper in the recycle bin makes me feel much better than the scraps I was originally left over with. Now it's time to add the focal points and decoration to the cards. And to do this, I got out the ephemera, the chipboard stickers, and the puffy stickers from the kit. Now originally a sentiment was to go across here, but I'll be using various stickers and sentiment strips to decorate my card fronts. Now I won't go over all of this because this probably did take the most time on the card set choosing pieces for the front, but I did want to show you that I kind of hold up the sticker sheets and the pieces to the cards to figure out what I'd like to go on there. So I did choose some pieces for each card and I added some of the sequins from the kit and here's a look at the finished cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made these six cards using the Spellbinders Quick and Easy Card Kit and the sheet load of cards for March 2023. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.